Well, welcome to Family Church. We're so glad that you are watching uh, and participating. We have been celebrating Pastor Paul and Jan this weekend, and man, we've had a weekend of it. It's been a lot of fun. People have come from out of town. Special guests have come, and uh, we're uh, celebrating your retirement, and this is your last weekend. And last week, Pastor Paul talked about his journey here at Family Church and how God had uh, some of the things he learned and what he uh, has come to truly believe and challenged us as to what that might be. And this week, uh, Paul and I are talking about what it's been like to serve together. And we have quite a story. And uh, we also want to see, share how our foundation uh, that we have laid together is really putting us forward to the future for the leaders that are, are still in place. Yeah, that's right, Ed. And we use the motif of a hike, and pretty much everybody can relate to that. And, and I use the picture that we are at a point of view, a vista, where you kind of look back along the trail, and uh, I've been going through a lot of files, and I moved my office and all of that, so it's caused me to really look at some of the wonderful moments and some of the painful moments, just like on a hike. You look back and you think, oh, I don't know if I want to ever walk that, that steep trail again or that boggy area or whatever that was. And we want to, we could have talked about a lot of things, but this weekend we want to talk about uh, a fork in the road that came in 2006. So when you're hiking, you will come at times to just a place where the trail divides. And sometimes there's a wooden marker that says, this is where you're going to end up if you go that way, and this is where you're going to end up if you go that way. Uh, we kind of came to a fork and there was no sign. <laughs> um, and so we want to tell you a little bit about that and how God intervened and worked in some amazing ways then, which gives us great confidence that he is still at work and will continue to work at Family Church. So I'll give you a little bit of my backstory. So I had been uh, already the, the senior pastor, the lead pastor here for 20 years, and the church had grown uh, to about 400, 450. But there was, uh, we'd, hit a, we'd hit a plateau, and there was a, a sense of tension in the congregation. There was division in the staff. There was just a lack of clarity about how we were moving forward. And what became obvious in the next couple of weeks is that I have certain gifts and there's other gifts that I do not have. And I came to the painful conclusion that I was causing this church plateau by hanging on to more than I could hold on to. And it came around through some kind of tough circumstances. I came home from vacation and uh, began a conversation with each one of the staff and found out that the other three pastors, for different reasons, were coming to the place of saying they were going to resign. And boy, that kicked us into kind of a panic. It kicked us into some very honest discussions. It kicked me into a realization that I could not keep doing what I was doing. Um, and so we actually were asked the question um, by the board is, do you feel like God wants you to stay here? And Jan and I went away for a weekend. And, and what I described to you as a fork in the road could very well have been the end of the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, we prayed and wrestled through and felt no peace at all about leaving and did not feel like that's what God was calling us to do. So we came back ready to dialogue and talk about the path forward, but we really, I, I really did not know what it was going to look like going forward. So that was my part of it. What was your part of the story? Well, I was probably the first one in your office that was, was uh, uh, resigned, and that was in a February, and, and, you know, there were some really good things that were happening. Um, many people were shocked to to experience what where we headed. But, uh, you know, we were a church of about 400. Paul had had um, led to that point, and, but we were stuck. And so I was just frustrated because um, there was such division. Um, there was uh, just, it seemed like it was hard to move the ministry forward. And I remember telling you when I was resigning, I said, you know, ministry is hard, but it doesn't have to be this hard. I remember <laughs> you saying that. And yeah. so I had, you know, I, I shared with Paul that I was, looking to move on, and, and I felt God was calling me elsewhere to be a lead pastor. And so um, 
uh, then the board, you know, kind of took about three months to just pray about it and talk together. And we were not included in those meetings. And it was June when the board invited me if I would be interested in uh, being the, the lead pastor. And uh, I had to think about that because I was pretty much ready to move on. And uh, it was, it, in my mind, it was too complicated. There was a lot of things to put into place. And it would, would have just been easier to, to, to go. Uh, so I took a long drive. And uh, on that long drive, I was asking, so what do I, what do I want to do? Where would I go? And then what would that look like? And that question over and over in my mind, in my head. And, and I just kind of came to the end of the day and, and still did not have an answer. And I can remember as I was headed home, just kind of frustrated, God said, it kind of prompted me and said, what? you're asking the wrong question. <laughs> the question is, what do you want me to, God, God was asking me, I, I should ask God, what do you want me to do? And when I asked God that question, it just came very clear. He just said, stay. And I said, but God, you know. <laughs> uh, but I, um, there was a piece about that, though. I had clarity that I was to stay. And I, I'd, made this, I'd made this deal with God. I said, God, this is over my head. This is too big for me. Um, but I will sit in the chair of that position of lead pastor if you will show up in me every day to accomplish the work that you have for us. And so both of us were called to stay. We weren't sure how it was going to work. I ended up moving kind of laterally to teaching and administration. Ed became the buck stops here lead pastor. Um, but it didn't look at all like a traditional church leadership. And so we kind of mined back through and said, what were the values? What were the things that really led to that decision and have led to an amazing uh, 15, 20 years more of harmonious ministry that's been in many ways, easier than either of us could have dreamt that it would be. But, but what were those values, Ed, that we talked about? Yeah, I, I want to share three values that led us through that and beyond that. And the first one is, is the value of uh, gifting over traditional leadership. Uh, Paul was gifted as a, as a Bible teacher and, and gifted communicator. He was, he was very welcoming of people. He knows everybody's name. <laughs> And he just makes people feel at ease. And so uh, that was the gift that he had. And he was bogged down with some of the administration that was going on that needed to be addressed. And he, was, he had a lot on his plate with uh, what he was already gifted at. I was uh, more gifted at vision and kind of future of the church strategy and development, developing the organization, developing the people of our, on our team and the church. And so that's where my gifting was. And I was um, doing some of that, but um, I had kind of a green light now to really carry out my, uh, you know, my, my gifts. And we've been talking about your spiritual gift. We use the acronym SHAPE, your spiritual gifts, your heart, your abilities, your personality, your, your experiences. But we were still operating like church is supposed to. And so when we suggested this pretty radical change, uh, there was a lot of cynicism, a lot of doubt, a lot of, is this going to work? And uh, we just said, we believe God wants us to try it. And uh, it, has been, it has been a great, a great uh, foundation for this church. It's also been great ministry together. Yeah. What's the second value? The second value is uh, shared leadership over solo leadership. And I had never been involved in the direction that we went where we were sharing so much of the leadership together, uh, but it really has become uh, a very important thing. Is really, I, I think we were able to, um, to accomplish so much more in our gifting as we work together as opposed to one person, you know, kind of doing it all. And so it really freed us up, but it took a lot of humility on, our, on, on your part to hand the, the leadership baton over to me. And, uh, but you, you've done it so gracefully. And, um, and, and it, it, I just see that we were able to, to, to be freed up and it really has built into that shared leadership idea for us to do team ministry, team in the sense that all of our, uh, our, our campuses and, and the team that has been developed um, are so um, working together in a shared leadership from the, from the leadership board all the way through our staff. And I hope it blends out into the, to the congregation. 
And I want to say, uh, on Ed's part, this has required a great deal of humility. Um, to be the one who does the hard work of handling crises and dealing with development and, and doing a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff, generally in a ministry position, that's also sort of balanced with the fact that, that you have a certain amount of recognition and support and encouragement. And, and Ed uh, was a great teacher to me. I got to sit back and watch him take the the position where I had tried to move ahead and was so stuck and for him to get us out of the stuck places and to move us ahead. And, and it has taken tremendous humility on his part. Some people still don't know what Ed does. In fact, some of them still call him Pastor Larry because there was a little confusion there. But he's done incredibly important and valuable work that, will show, that does show in the, the, the unity of the team and the connection we have now. And all I can say, Ed, is I'm glad that you're going to get rewarded in heaven because <laughs> you haven't received the, the recognition here, but I, I appreciate your, your servant heart and your, your humility. Mm. I, the, the third value is change lives. That has been something that um, early on as we were working together, just uh, it's so important that we don't just come and show up every week and have a message and have a class or have a life group or whatever that at the end of the end of the day that a life is being changed a life is being challenged to change and transformation if, if you identify one word of what we as a staff have agreed to what is the one word if you were to boil it all down transformation is the word that our staff would would say and um you know, we created tools like the, the spiritual pathway. We've created the defini defining the, you know, what a disciple is with the discipleship triangle and I, just those kind of things. And I think, you know, when people see the bumper sticker, lives are being changed at Family Ch Church, it's more than a bumper sticker. It really is happening here. And we were being transformed in the process. Oh, my of, word, yeah. Uh, of being involved in all of that. And so... I think when we talk about this hiking and forks in the road, I want to just challenge you with this thought. When you get to those places where you have to make a decision, in order to get where God wants you to be, you have to make the choice God wants you to make. And we want to celebrate that in 2006, God led us to do something sort of atypical, uh, not tr traditional church stuff, and that has made all the difference. But it's not really a new concept. If we really go back to Ephesians chapter 4, it's really right there in the mix of the whole thing. So let me read it and maybe you explain it a little bit. Sure. It says, Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Uh, but we, we believe in that there's that shared leadership. We have, uh, we have this dynamic team that has been developed that, um, that is ready to step into, uh, you know, equipping people for works of service. We have such a vision today of developing the body of Christ to go out to to be uh, uh, disciple makers among ourselves. And uh, we, you know, there, there's the, ab the ability for the body of Christ to be built up among ourselves. There's teaching, there's life groups, but even as individuals of each being trained and ready to, uh, to challenge others and grow, bring others alongside them. And I think that we have this dynamic team of, uh, of, 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 uh, that, that's ready to, 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 to move forward in that. Yeah, and I think the simple part of this verse is he gave gifted people to work together to equip the people to do the work of the ministry. Traditional picture is we pay the pastor to do the work of the ministry, and he works mostly by himself. So the fact that we made this choice really has a lot of foundation already there in the Scriptures. And you were going to kind of introduce the teams that we've got. And so why don't you just tell us who it is that's going to be carrying on the ministry? Yeah, here? as we look forward, we have this dynamic, uh, gifted, committed, devoted team, the team here at Sutherland. And uh, Pastor uh, Craig is going to be leading that charge. And I know he's going to do a fine job. And he has this dynamic team of gifted and committed leaders that are going to work with him. 
And uh, then in the green campus, we have Pastor Drew is leading the charge there. And that campus is doing some awesome things and growing. And uh, he has a team that functions with him. Also uh, at the South Umpqua, uh, Pastor Jason is leading that team. And they've experienced some positive things as they've been able to get a building now. And that congregation is growing. And uh, he has a great team that's working with him. And then Austin uh, is our online uh, connect uh, community director that uh, has helped to gather the, those people that are online that have not yet made it back to the, to the campuses. And we have people from all over, all over the world, actually, I mean, never, yeah, they're, that they're uh, can't away. come. And so um, he's done a great job of, of creating a community uh, online. And then we have the central team, and I lead that. And uh, these are uh, the people that, that are part of that. Um, you know, so as I look at uh, you stepping off the team, we've got this dynamic team that's ready and already, you know, moving forward. The, and uh, we're going we're gonna to miss you, but uh, we have, we're excited about the vision that uh, we have, people helping people find and follow Jesus and uh, make disciples making disciples. And, and they're ready to go, and we're, you're going to mess out some of the fun. <laughs> I totally believe that. Thank you, brother. All right. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure serving with you. So I just want to take a couple of minutes and just share some things that are on my heart. And the first big thing I want to share is thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we have been so privileged to serve here and to, to care for you, but also to be cared for, you, for us by you. And to say thank you for the, the many of you who've given words of encouragement and, and people have given financial gifts and people have taken care of our kids when we needed to go to a conference. And, and there have been so many ways in which I have been shaped and encouraged and changed. I am not the same person I was at 29 when I first came here. And God has done a marvelous job of, of shaping me and encouraging me and propping me up at some times. I told you, I stayed when I felt like it, and I stayed when I didn't want to stay anymore. I stayed when everybody wanted me to, and I stayed when some people didn't want me to. And all of that, God has reshaped my picture, and, and out of that has come this wealth and this richness. So I just want to say thank you in so many ways that you guys individually have poured into Jan and I and to our children. You've been the village that helped raise our kids, and, and they've gone on to follow the Lord, which is one of the greatest joys of our life. So I want to just say thank you. And then I want to give you kind of a, an overview challenge. I, I was thinking back over the last uh, number of years and probably for the first 15, 20 years, I was speaking 50 times a year. So I was thinking that certainly I've given at least thousands of messages and all of them really had three specific points. If you, if you took everything, and I've been looking through a bunch of old notes, and if you took everything and boiled it down, it really would be fairly simple. It would be, here's the things that, as we take the look back, three key messages. Number one, believe in and follow Jesus. That he is the one that gives us life. He's the one, he, he's the most fascinating character in history. He is, is literally incredible as you watch him and as you read about him and as you listen to him. And when you surrender your life because you find that he's not just a great, unique man, that he is the Son of God, then he gives us abundant life, fruitful life. He gives us meaningful life. And so the first simple lesson is, here's Jesus. Please trust him. The second lesson, and there have been so many lessons about this, but it's simply this. Move in growth. Strain yourself to learn the scriptures, to learn about God's ways. And it always happens in a community of relationships. And so listen to the people God puts into your life and speak into their life. And, and this picture that we read of earlier, that, that the whole body builds itself up as the body speaks the truth in love and as each part does its work. And I would say, the, the lesson that we talk about all the time is how do you get involved in growing experiences and the habits that bring maturity and in deep relationships in learning to, to share and to listen. And I would tell you, that's so important because so many things you earn here on earth, they are going to disappear and they will be gone. But the things that 
God gives you in your own life to grow and to understand him and to know him, that's going to last forever. And the third real simple lesson is get involved in serving the Lord while you have time here on earth. Get involved in the mission. Get involved in pouring out your life. Don't, don't be a consumer that just sits back and goes, well, I wonder what the church is doing. No, the, the lesson that says, I want to get in the mission because this is the most important thing on the earth. So <laughs> if you want cliff notes of a thousand messages, it's trust Jesus with your life, grow in him in every way you possibly can, and get involved in serving him and giving yourself to the mission of Jesus. And, and I was thinking of Paul's kind of last parting shots in, in 1 Corinthians, and he kind of says the same thing. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's where life is. That's where meaningful life, abundant life is. And it says, through victory in, in Jesus, and then he goes on and says, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. He says, I want to challenge you, brothers and sisters. Give it all you got. Pour out your life. Don't let Satan push you back from things you've already attained, things you've already learned. And then invest yourself fully in the work that God has called you to. That God has a calling on each of our lives just as much as he does on any pastor or missionary. And so to pursue that with passion and with intentionality. And he says, I promise you, it will never be in vain. And I'm here to tell you, I feel so blessed and I am so rich because as I have poured out my life to do what God's called me to do, God has poured so much more back into me. And I feel like my life has been filled with meaningful work and deep relationships with people and a learning of God's word and a sharing of God's word. And, and honestly, it doesn't get any better than that. And so I want to tell you not only from the scripture, but from personal experience and I want to give you a little phrase that might help you remember that. So I was smiling this week when a, a friend of mine was talking and he, and he shared something about, well, maybe I'm going to do this, but I might get in trouble with my wife. And then he concluded, you know what? I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> I just cracked up. I thought, what a great line. I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. And I think what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians and what I would like to say to you is to give yourself fully to Christ, to grow in Him, and then to invest yourself in the work of the ministry because I assure you, the juice is worth the squeeze. We're so glad of those of you who are part of our online community. And uh, I know that some of you are still in the local area. And uh, I hope that you can lend your strength to what God is doing at Family Church. I know some of you are scattered way abroad. And... I hope that God is using you in some kind of a local setting where you can pour your life out for the things that God has called you to. But I want to challenge you to those three questions. Have you really given your life to Christ? Have you really personally accepted Him as your Savior? And have you experienced the transformation? Not that you're going to get great woo feelings immediately, but that your life is not yours anymore. It becomes Christ's. And are you growing spiritually? The story we told about 2006, I had gotten pretty badly stuck and wasn't even really that aware of it. And, and that's a sad place to be. And if you're stuck, my challenge to you is to break out of the ice and to start moving ahead in your growth. And thirdly, if you've been more of a passive observer, our world is not going to last much longer and it's time to get into the game. It's time to put yourself fully into the work of the Lord. And I don't know exactly what that means for you, but I do totally believe that the Holy Spirit will lead you if, you if you say, God, I'm willing to do whatever you call me to do. You just show me and I will do it. And he will show you and you will do it and you will find out that just what I said is true. The juice is worth the squeeze. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for all who are listening and I don't know where they are in their spiritual development. I don't know what they need to hear or what they need to decide. But God, I ask that you by your spirit would speak to them and challenge them to, to listen to you and to take steps and to grow. And that wherever they are, 
that they would be involved in encouraging others and inviting others and sharing spiritual truths with other people, that the whole body might be strengthened and built up and growing as we discover our calling and as we develop in our character. And so, Father, as, as my role here changes, I just thank you that you've got a whole team coming behind that are just going to be doing a great job. And I pray that you'd provide the support and the encouragement and the love that we've received that they would also be surrounding this team so that they can accomplish great things for you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been a great privilege. Thanks for listening.